Hello everyone, let's create some rain in Blender. And um, please, if you like the video, leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We will enjoy any one of those. And let's dive right in. So to create rain, we need a particle system. All right, makes sense. And something that emits rain is usually a cloud, right? But I'm not going to create a cloud that you can't see. This rain will just be to cover some parts in your scene, to add a nice mood to your scene. Um, but we won't see the cloud itself. So delete this. And to fake the cloud, I'm just going to hit Shift A, Mesh, Plane. This is going to be our cloud. Beautiful. So to add a particle system, we can go to a particle tab, hit plus, and there we go. Right away, it's going to be expelling particles or rain in a little bit. Okay. Um, so we have a little bit of normal velocity by default. I'm just going to turn that off and just do let gravity do the heavy lifting. So we can go to velocity in a particle tab and just set this to zero. Right. And that way we won't have that initial bump to the top. All right. That's quite beautiful. So let's say we are right here in a scene. Let's create a bit of a larger area for our rain. It's falling down beautifully. Right. So we need something like an emitter object or sorry a particle object that is going to look like rain particles right so what does rain look like when it's falling well we basically just see it as streaks i guess because they fall quite quick we get so a little bit of motion blur in movies as well but if you slow down now the fun thing is that you may think rain looks like this when it falls, right? Because that's, <laughs> I don't know, the shape we have associated with water. Um, but in reality, physics usually just compress or, um, well, keep your water drop together as like a sphere, right? Usually tends to do that. So we don't really need a teardrop shaped particle, right? We just need a sphere with a little bit of a motion blur, okay? So don't worry about the teardrop although it is quite easy to make but we're going to stick to physics okay um so as long as your raindrops are not dropped from like a faucet or anything else dripping down which acts like um gravity pulls on the bottom i'm not sure why i'm going into so much detail but we got like a particle and when it falls spherical but when it drops from something right um there is some adhesive forces going on that may actually make this look more in shape of a little tear, I guess, when it drops down. Um, now, what is the shape of a raindrop? That is a fun little chat we can have. <laughs> a raindrop, um, you may think about different shapes, right? We got just a drop water. We got a tear-shaped drop. So what is it? How does it look when it falls? You may think it's this, but it's actually not. The reason why <laughs> is physics, right? We've got surface tension in um, in a spherical shape that's, that's just falling in the sky. And surface tension will keep this nice and spherical, right? Physics. Um, now, what does happen, though, is if this collides in the air with other small water particles, right? If they collide and they group together, the object gets bigger. And when this happens, it gets more wind resistance, right? So winds going up, or at least the density of the air is creating resistance in our particle. And this means that it's getting more of a shape like this. All right, and this continues actually. It's getting more flat and more flat until you get like a burger shape like this. We get wind blowing on the insides. It's creating more and more of this shape, thinner and thinner. And uh, at some point, that surface tension breaks right down the middle and you get shapes that look like this for just a second where it splits up here like that. And right after that happens, they continue to be spheres. All right, there we go. 
with some leftover little drops perhaps okay um so that's basically the process of what happens so not this but this all right so we do very briefly perhaps get this shape uh, but not really so what we can do is create spherical droplets and perhaps this one as well not this one uh, because it's i think it's just gonna look weird and I suppose yeah, there's much more of a chance you see this in the sky than you see actually see this flattening happening, All right? Um, so let's just create spherical droplets because that is how they will mostly be falling through the sky. All right, I hope that was a fun little, a little lesson here. There's actually a very fun video from NASA, the anatomy of a raindrop, the true shape of a raindrop revealed in a NASA, NASA video. It's quite fun to watch and quite interesting. I think it explains exactly this. This is exactly where I got the information from. So we need to create spheres. So shift A, let's hit shift and right mouse first to add our cursor here, shift A mesh. Um, let's go with a UV sphere and let's just lower the geometry a little bit like that. Yeah, that's beautiful and perhaps even lower actually we want the lowest we can get away with because we of course want a lot of them and then we can just right mouse and shade smooth this is fine right this is our spherical droplet that matches this now to create this one we're going to duplicate this there we go and let's scale it in the x direction a little bit and let's select this point enable o proportional editing press gz and move the lower part up a little bit so we get more of that shape there beautiful all right so now we have two droplets that we can use beautifully all right so i'm gonna scale this down just a little bit there we go so let's call this droplet spherical spherical and let's call this one droplet hamburger <laughs> beautiful now don't worry guys this is not the shape you will actually see falling down right because even with the best cameras, I suppose, you'll have a little bit of motion blur for your water particles. Because it is speeding down in the sky, okay? Um, so that means that your shutter time will most likely always have a little bit of a trail behind your particle. Which means it won't really look like this, but more like a stretched out shape in the Z direction. The direction it's moving in, right? So we'll see that later on. So I'm just going to select both of them. M, new collection, water droplets. There we go. And let's just see, press N. Just check if your scaling is one for both of them. Yes, there we go. Beautiful. So now in our emitter object, we can actually select it and go to particles, go to the render tab and set render as collection. Beautiful. Then... We can actually set our scale to be a little bit larger. Let's play this from the start. See how it looks. I can really see them. Um, we need to <laughs> select the collection, collection water droplets, and reduce the scale. There we go. Add a little bit of randomness as well. There we go. And pick random. Beautiful. Right, so now they're going to be falling down nicely. Um, I see this is a bit stretched in one direction though. Our hamburger shaped particle. So select, select, select it, press tab A, S, Y, scale it so it's a bit more spherical again. There we go. And there we go. Beautiful. All right, so now we got our water droplets in the sky falling down, right? But we want more spherical shapes, I guess, than we want these shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this. Shift D, just move it to the side, right? Shift D, for every three water drops, I want one of these, for example. And I want this one to be a bit bigger, actually, because, like I said, this is going to be the shape when multiple water droplets have been collided. Okay, beautiful. Amazing. So, we can see we got a few of those in the sky, but mostly we got water droplets. Okay, quite interesting. Um, so let's dive actually into the material of those water droplets and render this out as well. So the material of a water droplet is basically water. <laughs> you may not have expected that. Um, so let's open up a shader editor, set this to be shader editor of course. Let's go to the render view, set this to cycles, GPU, there we go. 
and let's hit new in the material tab. And I don't want principal BSDF, just delete that. Shift A, and we can actually find a glass BSDF, which is the easy way I take whenever I want some very quick water. I will just connect glass. Um, but water is actually not an index of a refraction of 1.5, but 1.33, all right? That, or 1.333, perhaps, I don't know. Um, that is the index of a refraction of water, right? Now you can also cheek the roughness, tweak the roughness a little bit if you do want just a slight hint of roughness in there, I suppose. Um, but generally, they are not really rough, of course. Right, so this is the cheeky way I usually use. Now select all of the droplets, select the one you gave a material last, Control L, and copy uh, link materials. There we go, now they are all beautifully watery. Amazing. Um, so well, let's start setting up the scene a little bit better for rendering. Um, and to render this, I'm just gonna render this on a black background, I suppose. Um, so I'm going to go to my world first. I'm going to use, uh, I may use a sky texture for this one. And I'm just going to turn my world to black, right? Because I want lights to take care of whatever I want. So I'm going to select the light that is in the scene by default. I'm going to turn this into an area light. And I'm going to move it right over there to light up my particles. There we go, we can make this a little bit stronger as well. And let's replay our animation with more particles. Set this to 50,000. Right, so that will really add some beautiful water drops in our scene. Right, you can already tell we got some beautiful water dropping down. Amazing. Um, so... I am going to go back to my water material and I'm actually going to turn my roughness down because I feel like it looks weird with a bit of roughness, right? You get a little weird glare there. I don't want that. There we go. And that is looking beautiful. And to prevent your particles from not being visible at all, I recommend just upping the size of your area light a little bit because that will be the reflection in your particles pretty much right as you can tell quite interesting i suppose so that is looking quite nice already we can rotate their light a little bit to get more of the feel we're looking for and i'm also going to select my particle system go to particles and i'm going to go to my viewport settings if i can find that render settings there viewport display hide emitter in render as well hide emitter that way, when we play this, we won't get that emitter object blocking the light, right? So our light will be pretty much throughout the entire system. And we can see beautiful water falling down, right? Amazing. Now, this looks a little bit weird because we don't have any motion blur yet, of course, right? Um, so actually, I also want a bit more randomization in my skill. There we go. Beautiful. And let's set up a camera so we can test this out with a little bit of motion blur. Okay. And let's add more particles. <laughs> there always add more particles. Beautiful. A hundred. Let's go 150,000. And then just play this. Pew, pew, pew. You can see it's still quite fast. Let's press Shift A camera. Um, Control Alt and the zero to set the camera to your current view. And Control B around your camera to just link your renderer view to your camera, okay? Then, let's select our camera in the outliner. We can actually delete the old one. I'm not sure why I added a new one, but it's fine. Um, and go to your camera data and add a little bit of depth of field. Decrease your f-stop to a lower values so we get some nice blur. And set the distance to something um, that you like. Right, so which particles do you want to be in um, in focus and which ones do you not want to be in focus? I just set that up to be the way you like it to be. All right, beautiful. Um, I think that looks quite all right. I think our camera is rotated a bit weird though. 
isn't it? I'm just gonna set this to zero. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So beautiful. Let's zoom out a little bit. And let's render it like that. All right, so that is looking quite nice. So let's actually try and add another light source. Shift D, X, rotate this around. There we go. And make this a little bit more of a bluish tint, perhaps. There we go. A little bit of color. And play around with the size in this one as well. Right, just so we get a bit more light in there. And perhaps the first one can be a bit smaller. Just like that. Before I'm going to render this, I realize that they are a bit big. So I'm going to change the scale to be a little bit smaller, like that. And I'm going to add the motion blur in my render tab, motion blur, and set this to be like points. Too, because the particles are probably moving very fast already. So now I'm also going to add a little bit of sideways velocity here, um, which we can do by either adding wind. Let's add wind, right? Let's just keep, um, <laughs> keep ourselves linked to physics a little bit. So hit Shift A, force field wind, and then rotate this around the direction you want your wind to be in. I want this to be a little bit to the left. There we go. And we can turn on the strength a little bit so we can really see what is going on. You can see our particles are, uh, there we go, <laughs> this way. And rotate this around Z a little bit so it moves in the direction um, parallel to the camera, I guess. There we go, beautiful, right? So now they are actually floating a bit more to the left. Perhaps that's a bit too strong, three. And let's play. Right, so now if we have motion blur, it's going to be in this direction more instead of straight down, which is more beautiful. So let's go to our particle plane, particle tab, cache, and bake everything. Um, just to make sure that everything is going to look the same when we press render as it does in the viewport. So let's see frame 60 or whatever. There we go. In our render tab, make sure we enable motion blur and say this to like 0.25, I guess. And let's just render this and see how it looks. I'm going to set my samples to 1, 2, 8 for this one and render image. All right, I rendered it out. Um, one thing I'm going to tweak real quick is the size, the scale of my particles. They can be smaller. Something like, because rain is quite small, of course, 0 0.007, I suppose. Something else I turned off real quick was the depth of field for my camera. I think motion blur and blur in general um, are a bit much in this case. So I turned off my depth of field. Now for the sake of not ending up with weird looking motion blur, I am adding a bit of roughness to my particles, right? Because the area lights we have are otherwise gonna be very strong. And that means that we see these light streaks um, being stretched and then the dark spots in the middle, if I set this to zero, that's not gonna do any streaks, and then this will streak, and this, and that's gonna look a little bit weird. So in this case, it depends a little bit on the lights you have and the way you want this to look in your motion blur. Uh, but I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit of roughness, and perhaps just tweak the color to be a bit darker, for example. So we have motion blur everywhere, um, but not just at the sides, right? Render that out, and you'll see more rain. Beautiful. And then we end up with some beautiful rain. All right, so customize this however you like. And if you like this, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We would enjoy any one of those. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.